Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build. Today something that's out there in space. Well, on Mars, we have the Mars Rover. Now I've done the Lunar Rover and the Lunar Module and one of the satellites. And it's taken me long enough, it's time to put this one together as well. So let's open it up, see how difficult it's going to be while we put it together. Let's open up the Mars Rover. Inside we have two metal sheets, which is fairly standard, and we have the instructions. Let's try to open this up ever so carefully. And there appears to be just the one piece of paper, kind of the tall, older style. So, fold this in half so we can look at the top half of the front sheet. Everything's basically broken into quarters. We have the top um, left quarter, which is where you start. I mean, it shows you the Metal Earth logo and the line drawing, and some tips in here about insertion tabs, insertion holes, fold lines, and one of the parts to point to what they're talking about. There's always the needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly. And then we have a sort of ledge in here when you're looking through the assembly flowchart and you see a blue circle. That's telling you that that tab needs to be bent over, or at least according to their directions. The green triangle is indicating to insert a tab and twist it about 90 degrees to secure it. And here's a little bit about pulling and screwing the tabs to make them more secure. And at the bottom of this first section, you have the layout of the sheets. So that you can easily find the numbers that point to the part. You can easily find them on the sheet to build the model. Over here we have the start of the assembly flowchart on the top right side. You start with part one, two, three, and four. And you fold up one to make that. Four plugs in right here. It looks like on top of maybe two. Two goes here and three goes there. But it almost looks like four goes on top. This one's not numbered and this says two times two so it'll probably make more sense when I get to that point when I actually see the part but you just follow through you've got some assemblies where they shape things and they come together you know, five six seven folds up like that eight folds up like that and you add it on here and you just follow the arrows as best you can to put this together when you get to the middle go down to the bottom half the bottom left side and just pick up putting together sub assemblies and bringing them together to make the parts and then the bottom right corner keep on going you just get the bottom of that of course you flip over we'll try to fold it the other way back to the top left all the arrows and this side top right and then bottom left and bottom right and you're all done let's talk tools I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build I have needle nose pliers I have flat nose pliers I have flush clippers these are a must for me they clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. I also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits, and I use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener, these two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. These Kelly clamps or hemostats, I've heard them called several names, can be used to hold on to small parts while guiding them into place. They lock so they won't let go. I do not use them much because they have teeth and you can scratch the part, but sometimes my hands are just too small. 
curved needle nose pliers to me are very useful for bending over longer thin areas that have obstructions They keep regular needle nose pliers from getting to them and being helpful. They can also be handy in tight places. We briefly looked over the instructions and the metal sheets. Got some tools together to get me started. Let's put this together. Part 6 confused me at first. I couldn't quite figure out where it went and how it was oriented. Also, the one tab was too close to the side and I had to use something to pry it up and bend it over. I should not have used the flat nose pliers to twist a tab. They tend to break the tab rather than just twist them. And the part with the broken tab comes loose. Time for a dab of Loctite.
I used the tips of the round nose pliers to shape the cone shapes that go on the arm. It was not the perfect shaping tool, but working carefully down the end of the tool, I managed to make a decent cone shape. Bend these tabs as close as you can to the side of the square part. The tighter you can bend it, the better things will line up when joining tabs and slots. If you don't bend the tabs close enough, they will not fit properly and it could be difficult to fix.
a lot of these little antenna parts I decided to not bend up after attaching them, at least not yet. I know I will likely hit them by mistake while trying to complete the build and I do not want to break the parts. I did my best to put these pieces together the correct way, but I do not think I was completely successful. This part was a little tough to hold in place.
Time to bend up all the antenna pieces. I originally bent the pieces on part 45 the wrong way. Also, the parts with the tabs on them did not need to be bent down right away. This video has been edited down. I've not shown all the different attempts, adjustments, or retries of this build. I also clip out parts where I am studying directions, searching for and clipping parts, and sometimes repetitive steps. It may make this kit look like it comes together easier than it did, but there are a lot of bending and adjusting of parts to make things fit. Work slowly, be patient, and take your time.
Because I mistakenly bent the connection tabs back and forth on the one side, the tabs started breaking off. This is one of those times where I ended up going back and buying a second model. I just reassembled the broken wheel section and kept going. The Mars Rover is finally here, finally done, the last of the rovers, but not quite the last of space. This is, as one would expect, got a lot of tiny little parts. It's a metal earth model, they tend to do that. Not terribly difficult to work with, but some a little bit challenging. A lot of possible antennas to break. But of course, it looks very nice and will look very nice with the lunar rover and lunar module. And aside from the problems I had with the tabs and the leg breaking, which were kind of my own fault, this was another fun build. The Mars rover took about three and a half hours to build, which is a little more than I would have thought. Again, with the problems with the legs, probably subtract about 10 minutes from that, five to 10 minutes, which is not that big a difference. It may take you longer, it may be quicker for you. But this is a nice build. If you're into space, add this to your collection. It's not that hard. It's not a beginner's model, but it's not an expert model by any means. I'm going to end it with, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.